Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again. I want to welcome you back to another review in the Fast and the Furious franchise. I know it's a little bit of a different view. Um, we actually moved things around because the couch used to be behind the camera up against the window. Actually, I'll just show you guys quick. Why not? So, yeah, the couch used to be over there. So now it's over here. And then we moved, the TV used to be here, now we moved it in the corner. Got American Sniper on while I'm doing this, so switched everything out in there. Organized my uh, DVDs and Blu-rays a little bit better and moved the stereo in the corner. And the left speaker is there, the right speaker is over there. So yeah, we moved things around a bit, but that's okay. It's always good to do something different. Turn that around so I can see myself when I'm doing this. There we go. I'm doing this review. But anyway, I want to welcome you all back to the review for Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift. I actually like this film. Um, did not get a chance to see it when it first came out back in 2006. That's what it says on the back here. I thought it came out in 2005 for some reason. But 2006, which almost 10 years old, which is hard to believe, but oh well. Um, I remember seeing the ads and the trailers. I'm like, oh cool, they're in Japan, you know, where the majority of these import cars comes from. That's cool, you know, I can, I can see that. I can see how that would be a good idea for a movie, um, a good idea for a Fast and the Furious movie. So, but I remember hearing, oh, well, Paul Walker's not in it. You know, so I was like, well, you know, Paul Walker was in the first two. I like Paul Walker, so eh, I'll wait till it comes out on DVD or whatever and, you know, check it out from there. Um, but even then, you know, I never, I never saw it um, until I think when I got this DVD. Yeah, I think when I bought this DVD was the first time I ever saw the film. And this is a later release because, you know, it has the... Uh, the border artwork and then it has the number on the spine and I got this when again the sixth film came out like I said I got I finally got two on DVD I got two three and four the same day I got two and three at Walmart because Walmart was running them for like five bucks or seven bucks or whatever it was Four I got at Big Lots for like five bucks because that was, sorry, very tired. That was the uh, two disc edition, but then I upgraded to the Blu-ray, which you'll see in the next review. And five I had before that because five I found at Target like right after it came out. It was on sale for like ten bucks or something on DVD. But I since got rid of that DVD because I have it on Blu-ray now. Um, I got rid of, like, some stuff recently, like, I either had it on uh, DVD, I had it on DVD and Blu-ray, so I got rid of the DVDs, because usually the Blu-rays have more features, but, of course, the Blu-rays are going to look better anyway, so, yeah, just kind of, just get rid of stuff I don't need at this point, but anyway, that's another topic for another day, but yeah, I only saw this film a couple years ago, recently, you know, recently, you know, when, uh, Furious 6 came out is when I saw this movie. Because um, I figured, hey, it was a couple dollars on DVD. If I don't like it, I can always trade it in. But I ended up enjoying the film. Um, I remember, actually, that was the first time I saw the movie completely. Because I, um, I watched it on TV. Yeah, I watched some of it on TV at a friend's house. And I was like, oh, you know, I've never seen this one before. But it was like the last half of the movie, so of course I didn't really know what was going on and stuff. But I did like what I saw, and you know, and for some reason I never got around to renting it or whatever. So I, you know, like I said, the, a couple years ago when I picked this up is when I saw the movie for the, the first time on DVD. Just looking to see if there was an insert, couldn't remember. The first time I saw the movie completely um, is when I got this DVD. But I liked it. Um, I know it's almost five minutes in and I haven't begun talking about the movie, but oh well. But I enjoyed this film. Um, I know a lot of people will say that it's one of the, the lower ranked films. 
because I don't want to say worst because it's not a bad movie. You know, I, I don't see why people say, oh, that was the worst movie. Because it's not a bad film. I, I don't think it's a bad movie. Um, it's different, which I enjoy. Um, you know, I do like that about the film, which I'll get into. But, yeah, I thought it was solid. You know, I thought it was a good sequel. Um, like I said, it's different. But different is good, you know. Um, sometimes, you know, change is good. Which I, again, with this film, I enjoyed that. You know, I like that about this movie. Um, but, you know, this film... Like I said, it, it goes in a different direction, which was cool. Um, it's more, the characters are, are younger, which I like. They're in their um, teens and early 20s, which I thought was cool. It was a little bit different because, you know, that's who these films, even now with 6 and 7 and, and 5, these films are geared towards that crowd. Like I said, in the first two films, you know, the first movie came out in 2001. At that time, you know, that's really when you had the second wave of teen films. The late, you know, mid to late 90s into the early 2000s. In the 80s, you had them, you know, and then kind of in the late 80s and the early 90s, they died off, you know, much with slasher films and stuff like that. And then with Clueless, I think that's when it got revitalized. I think Clueless was the first one of those movies to be successful after that initial phase. Because, of course, you know, they're going to still make those kind of movies, but they might not always work. Excuse me, I need to take a drink quick. So I think, like, and I know I talked about it in the, the review for the first film, but I think, like, with Clueless, once that movie came out, that's when you had that good stretch of, like, seven, eight years when they were just pumping out teen films like crazy. So, yeah, you know, they, they knew at this point who their audience was. You know, they knew who the, uh, the people that were paying the movies were, so they started to shift towards that. And again, I like how it's different. It's, it's, a, it's a good idea how they aim for younger characters and stuff, which I thought was cool. Really enjoyed the setting of Japan. Um, I've always been obsessed with Japan and the Japanese culture and one day I will definitely get there um, because again you know like I said this is where you know a lot of these cars you know Honda Mitsubishi you know all these cars are made or not Honda Honda's not Japanese is Honda Japanese I don't even remember I drive a Honda I should know this but a lot of these cars Excuse me, are Japanese made. And that's, you know, where the movie takes place, which is interesting. You know, I enjoyed that. So, basically, the, and the plot's really simple. Um, you know, the first film, the second film were more action movie type plots. The, you know, this is very simple. Very simple plot. This kid, um, Sean Boswell is his name. Um, <clears throat> he's like a kid that's always in trouble, you know, always in and out of trouble, um, he's a drag racer, you know, his first day, I believe it's his first day at a new school, and he's checking out this girl, you know, her boyfriend is like the captain of the football team who's played by, uh, Zachary Ty Bryan from Home Improvement, which it was cool to see him, because he, you know, it's, it's weird because a lot of, again, a lot of the, the child stars of that era, the 90s, and even, you know, later in the 80s, what else have they done besides those shows or those movies and stuff? Like, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, you know, what has he done lately? Or the other guy from, uh, what was his name, Taron Smith, the other guy from Home Improvement. You know, what, what have all these guys done? But it was cool to see Zachary Ty Bryan. And he's done a little bit. I know, I think he was Thor in the Asylum version of Thor. I know he's been in some TV shows. I know he was in an episode of Buffy in the last season, which was cool because I was watching. I'm like, oh, hey, he's in this. But he's like this football jock, and he races Sean, and they go through this development. They fuck it all up. They got the Kid Rock song, uh, Ball With The Ball, playing, which I like that song. I've never been crazy about Kid Rock. He's not one of my favorites, but I don't mind him. I think he's got some good songs, but I like Ball With The Ball. I think that's... Probably my favorite song by him. I do enjoy that song quite a bit. 
So they're racing through there. They fuck all this shit up. They get in trouble. And, you know, Sean's given the option, you know, you either get locked up or you go live with your dad in Japan because his dad's in the Navy. So he goes to live with his dad. I thought it was his uncle for some reason. I don't I, I guess I got that confused with a later plot point. But, he, you know, he goes to live with his dad and he goes to this new school. Um, he's trying to fit in. You know, he meets some of the kids there, like Bow Wow. Uh, little Bow Wow is in there. I, I liked him. Um, I remember liking some of his songs back in the day. And I liked um, that movie, Like Mike, because my brother used to watch the hell out of that movie. I think we still have it on VHS somewhere, if it's, if it's not worn out at this point. But I know my brother bought it on DVD, but he used to watch that movie all the time as a kid. Um, I didn't mind the movie. I thought it was all right. Um, but it was cool to see him in this. You know, he's on the back there. I'm sure you can see that. And then also, um, we're introduced to, um, Sun Kang's character, uh, Han, who would play a later part in the, you know, the franchise, which is cool. Um, and there's this girl that he likes who, she's on the back there too. She's a hottie. I liked her in the movie. Um... You know, he um, starts making moves on this girl. Her boyfriend is this uh, drag racer. They call him the Drift King. And Sean gets into a race with him. And he doesn't know how to drift, so he fucks his car up and everything. Which it turns out to be Han's car. So him and Han uh, become friends. And he fixes his car. And, you know, they work together and everything. And throughout the course of the movie... You know, he teaches him how to drag race because he wants to get back at this guy because he finds out his uncle is part of the Yakuza. Who We get a cameo from Sonny Chiba, which I thought that was really cool because I remember watching, like I said, when I was at my friend's house watching it on TV, that part came up with Sonny Chiba. I'm like, oh my God, Sonny Chiba's in this movie. And he's like, who? I'm like, he's the Japanese version of Bruce Lee. He, I said, you, you don't know. He's like, yeah, I don't know. I'm like, yeah, he's a legend. Sonny Chiba is a legend. So I thought that was really cool to see him in the movie. You know, and you find out that Han's been ripping these guys off. So they want to get back at him. So they have this race. Han gets killed in the race, which, of course, they, uh, you know, explain later in the, the franchise what happened there. And... Um, Sean, you know, wants to get back at this guy, um, so he builds a car basically from scratch. He takes his dad's Mustang, he puts a, you know, an import engine and everything in there, races down this mountain, beats this guy, and wins the respect of everybody. And then the last part of the movie, um, Vin Diesel shows up and races him and the movie ends, which, again, they set up for later in the franchise. But yeah, I mean, very simple film, you know, not a big elaborate plot. And again, you know, these films, even, you know, 5, 6, and 7, the plots are still pretty simplistic. You know, 5, it was a heist movie. 6, it was, you know, this guy is basically the evil version of you. We want you to bring him down. Simple. 7, okay, you killed this guy's brother. He's looking for this. He's also trying to kill you. So you get this for him. You'll get after him. Simple movie. Not complicated at all. And again, you know, that's one thing that these movies get right constantly. Even, you know, this movie. Which I know a lot of people don't like, but I do. Simple plot line. You know, and that's, that's good. You know, I'm glad that these films don't go off in this complicated plot where, oh, this guy's connected to that guy, and this guy does this, and this guy does that, and, you know, whatever. Um... But hey, what can you do? But yeah, the racing scenes in this movie, I think they did a better job than two because there's I don't I didn't notice a whole lot of CGI. In the close-ups there is, because that's just how they do it now. But a lot of the wide shots, you could tell it was just stunt, you know, stunt driving. It was practical. It looked good, which I enjoyed that. Um, you know, so I thought, yeah, the movie was solid. I thought it was a solid sequel. Um, again, you know, I know people would probably put this one lower, but, um, I mean, I liked it more than, 
seven. That's just my opinion. That I would say seven is my least favorite. But that's just, you know, my opinion. I know people are going to get upset and dislike the video and comment and everything. But so tired of that bullshit, really. You know, fuck that. Just tired of dealing, tired of hearing about that shit, you know. But, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I thought this was a solid flick. This is the first one that Brian Tyler did the score. I think he's done the score for all the subsequent movies. I know he did the score for four. Yes, I know he did five and six. I believe he did seven. I'm not sure. Um, and this is also the first one that Justin Lin directed. He would direct the next uh, three movies. He would direct four, five, and six, which I thought was cool. So, yeah, and I thought the direction was good. I liked some of the, the songs in the movies. Some of the soundtrack is good. Didn't mind the cast. You know, I, I liked uh, Lucas Black as the lead. I remember him in a movie called Flash. For Disney back in the day. I remember that movie. And I was like, oh cool, the kid from that movie is in this. That's not that's not bad at all. And again, I like Sun Kang in this movie. I didn't mind Bow Wow. You get a cameo from Sonny Chiba. You get a small part from Zachary Ty Bryan. So I thought that was pretty cool. But at the end of the day, yeah, I think Tokyo Drift is a, is a good movie. A solid movie. Good sequel. Um, you know, I, I, I know it made... Um, it wasn't, I mean, it made money. It, it was a hit, but it didn't make as much as they were expecting or as much as the, uh, the first two. But, you know, that's how they, uh, sucked Vin Diesel into doing the next movie because they, um, for this movie, um, he didn't want to get paid. He, the reason why he did this movie, uh, he made a deal with Universal to where he would get the rights to the Riddick franchise in exchange for doing a cameo. And then... You know, they said, okay, you know, that's cool, but, you know, we want to make more of these films, and we want you to be in them. So they got him back, which is kind of cool. And that's cool of Vin Diesel to do that, you know. A lot of these actors, you know, of course they want a bunch of money for a small role, but Vin Diesel's like, no, just give me the rights to Riddick, and we'll go from there. And Yeah, that's cool. So, yeah, I always like, I mean, I've liked this movie since I checked it out. You know, I don't know why it took me so long to check it out, but, yeah, I enjoy it. I thought... It's a good movie. So anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoyed my review of Tokyo Drift. Next, I'm going to review Fast and Furious, or as I call it, Fast 4, because now this is where the titles get confusing. So I will talk more in depth about that, and I will check you all later. Take care, and bye-bye.